Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through the process of programming your Motorola XPR series radios. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be using the XPR 7580s using CPS 2.0. Now, this process does work for all of the XPR series of radios. It may differ differently, especially if you have one of the older XPR series radios that does use 1.0, Motorola 1.0. Uh, this will look maybe slightly different, but you could try and bring this over. Uh, if you would like a whole separate tutorial for Motorobo 1.0, of course, let me down in the comments below and any basically likes on this video will show me that you want a part two. Uh, and of course, I'm showing different processes of how to use the different parts of um, the Motorobo 2.0 software. So do let me know and any sort of interaction with this video is very much appreciated. So for this tutorial, you will need a couple of things. So of course, first of all, you will need your programming cable. Now this programming cable I got off of eBay for about 60, maybe 70 ish euros. I uh, don't know what that is in dollars, probably about 80, 90 dollars um, off of this one guy called uh, Blue Maxes, uh, 49, if I'm correct. Uh, I'll link his eBay down in the description below so you can go ahead and check out his store. He has all sorts of amazing Motorola sort of items that you would be able to help with your radios and of course more than Motorola. And of course you will need your Motorola XPR 7580s. Now, as I said, this works for any XPR series radio, but it may differ differently depending if you're using Motorola 1.0 or 2.0 as stated before. Now I do have to set a little disclaimer that this video is for education purposes only. Programming or transmitting on certain frequencies may be illegal depending on your region or your country. So do check your local laws to make sure you're not breaking any because we, we don't want that, especially on this channel, on making sure that you're using these wonderful and powerful machines legally and correctly. All right, guys, so now that we have everything set up and all the disclaimers out of the way, let's get started with getting this whole system sorted. Now, first and most important thing, of course, is you need your Motorobo CPS 2.0, which I have here on my desktop. Sometimes it does take some time for it to turn log in and set up, but you can see here, luckily I've got a good laptop, so hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Uh, now, whilst that's opening up and getting itself all kind of ready and sorted out, we are going to want to make sure that we have our Motorola radio connected. So for first of all, connect your USB into your PC as usual, like you do with everything, and then take the other end and connect it to your programming cable side of the radio. Now, this of course will differ depending on what radio you do have. Uh, so it might have a different socket. So make sure you do get the correct end for the correct radio because I made that mistake before. It's not fun getting the wrong cable and then having to send it back and get a whole new one. It's a pain in the back side, but it should work. Now, now that we have this uh, connected and set up, you should of course hear the radio turning on and then on the Motorola radio, it should uh, make this little tweaking sound. Uh, I think you just heard it through the microphone uh, and then you can hear the computer make its uh, doo -doo sound. So you can hear that the accessory is connected. So now that we have that all connected and sorted, we will basically bring our attention to Motorobo CPS 2.0. And as you can see, there are quite a few buttons here. So don't worry at all, guys. I'll run through the basic processes of all the buttons as quickly as possible. So what we all we really need to know at the minute is, of course, up here, which is the file section. Come, come on, guys. You guys, are, you guys are dumb, so it's pretty easy to understand what this means. Uh, this is where you save um, open files. So basically, all your code plugs. This is where you'll be saving them, opening them, getting them set up. Then up here you have the devices. Now the devices area is where you read your Motorola radio. So where you can see what you have on the code plug can, with the radio that's connected. Uh, you can also write and uh, clone the, your device. Uh, now cloning is a whole nother process that I'll get into in another episode if you guys are interested. Just of course, let me know down in the comments below what you'd like me to get into and I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated with that. Now, the next part, of course, is the update and the draw, uh, and the recover options. Now, the update options is to make sure you're installing a newer uh, software version onto your, onto your Motorola radio. So you can basically go and check uh, by going in your Motorola radio settings, uh, go to utilities, go to radio info, and then, ver let me see here, versions, and it should show your firmware and your code plug version now that's where you'd be able to update that and get that all installed onto the radio next thing here is licenses now that's a whole nother thing again that i can get into another video about so we'll leave that one there as well same goes with the tools 
and then the help index. If there's anything in the video that you cannot find, the help index will help you here. You just gotta look up the problem you're having and it should be able to help you. If not again, let me know in the comments below. I'll try my best. So getting back onto the next part here, the one that we're looking for is the read option. Now, as I said, once you've got your radio connected, all you need to do is press this icon here and what it'll do is the computer will now read the Motorola radio that you have connected. So it will make a very loud beam sound in a minute. So be ready for that. But as you can see, it will let you know the status of the, basically of the reading of the radio. There we go, amazing. So very nice, quick, simple and easy. No problems at all with the reading status. So as you can see here, read device successful. Uh, I like to make sure this shows up so we know there's no errors. So we'll just press okay here. Now this might look a little bit, a uh, little bit confusing here, but what we'll do is, uh, with the aim of the video, of course, is setting up basically channels as getting them set up so you can listen on certain frequencies. So we'll start with the easy point. Now we'll go down here and we do need to make sure that there are a few things in order. So the first and most important thing here is the network. So we need to make sure that all of these are set up on the correct network that you'd like to be using. Now, because I do have a, let me see here, a DMR radio. Uh, this does go from the frequencies, if I was correct, of 800 to 900 megahertz, uh, which does require a license where I'm living currently. So I do have that set up for these channels. So don't copy the exact channels I've got unless you've got a license for those channels and make sure that you are fully under the law for when it comes to this process. Uh, so we've got the general here, there's the radio IP address. Now you can make this whatever you want, make it memorable. Uh, make sure it is this digit of numbers. We do need to make sure that this is uh, basically like just trying to set up an IP address on a computer or on your local network. So you're gonna wanna start off with 192.168 and then you can change the digits that's after that. So for me, I have it set to 10.37, but you can change that to 6.30, 6.30, nine or whatever really works for you and what works for your instance. So now that we have all those other bits set up within network, the next important thing we need to do is we need to, of course, get the channels added to the system that you want added. So to do that, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to channel, so zone slash channel assignment. Of course, this will be different with CPS 1.0, but I can make a separate video for that. Then you're gonna wanna press zone which this is under zone. If you don't have zone, uh, oh no, you do have zone no matter what here, no matter what you have zone. And then you're gonna wanna go down to where it says zone one, or if you don't have zone one set up, so you've got, for example, a completely empty code plug where you got no channel set prehand. What you're gonna wanna do is right click on, let me see here, right click on zone, and then you're gonna wanna create set, and then you're gonna wanna here add the channels that you want. So for you, it would probably just be called zone. But for me, I have zone three because I have, of course, a channel pool and zone one and zone three that I just added. So I'm gonna delete that uh, and start off with uh, the ones which I had before here. If, as you can see, the software is sometimes kinda slow. Moving on, uh, once of course you go into your now zone section, what you're gonna see here is you might see different channels or you might not. It just depends on if you've tinkered around with this or not. But as you can see here, this is where your channels will be. You can go ahead and press the plus button here and you can now choose which type you want to add. If you would like to add an analog or digital. Now, we won't go through capacity plus uh, and personality stuff sorted for now. We'll go on with that in another episode. But for now, we'll start off with simple and we'll start off with an analog system. Now, analog system is the one which I'm most used to using uh, and that's the most straightforward one. So basically, uh, you'll wanna, if you have it set to digital, for now, let's change it to analog. So once we have analog, then you can press the OK button and then as you can see, that added a whole new row onto our table here. So if we pretend we don't see any of these here to start off with, I probably should have gone ahead and continued with that fresh a uh, new zone here just to show as a uh, next part, but it doesn't really matter, it'll be fine for now. So as you can see here, this is the uh, section that shows which channel type it is. And of course we have the set to analog. Now you can also see here, the next channel along is called the channel name. Now that's where you can change the channel. So what you can do is you can call it channel four, you can call it 
uh, the the frequency that you have it set to, which is what I have to my two main analog channels, which then you know immediately what channels on, and you can easily basically remember what the business is with that here. Moving on to the next part, uh, if you of course I'll show you in further videos how to add voice announcements to it. So basically, when you go to that channel, it will say channel four. It will say the megahertz frequency. You can add that onto here. That's a whole nother part though. I can add on to in the future. Next one here is quite important and that is the channel bandwidth. Now I'm not going to get into the whole specifications and all the meanings for that here today in this video, but basically I have it set to that. So I have it set to 12.5 at the minute. Then moving on to the next one here, as you can see, we don't have these two because these two are set for uh, digital channels. So we don't have digital channels. Uh, this isn't a digital channel. So this is just an analog. Uh, then moving along this again scan and roam list. You don't need to worry about that for now That's further stuff. We'll move into the next video And then if you move all the way along to the end This is where you can add your frequency now you can see here now This is the RX frequency. So this is the frequency that if I was correct that the Channel like you'll be listening to so at the minute it has a default set to 8700 megahertz I'm gonna change that because I don't have a license for this uh, frequency. So I'm gonna change this to the frequency I have a license for, which is 8510125 megahertz. Uh, so I'm gonna move that onto here. Uh, I'm gonna leave the squelch. We're gonna leave the, all the DPL code. We're gonna leave all that for its default here. We're not gonna change any of that. Uh, and then we're gonna move along. And as you can see here, this is another thing I'll get into a whole nother video. And that's the emergency alarm indication system. Now you can add alarm frequencies. So basically when you press the big red alert button on the radio, it sends out a frequency letting everybody on your network know that there's something going on or you need them to come too fast, whatever it would be. It will change depending on that. You can add that onto your radio again, future episode. Now we'll move along from there. Again, there's all the emergency stuff. And now this is, again, the other part of the frequency. So you can have this set to a different frequency for security reasons. Now, I don't need that personally. Uh, for me, I'm going to have it set to the same one. So basically, let me find that here if it wants to save. So it'll be on the, basically the listing in and taking out will be both on the same network. So on the same frequency. Now, there are some reasons why that not, might not be a good thing. It might be a good thing. It depends on what you need it for. Uh, like it can kind of block up certain frequencies if you do have it set to the same one and you have lots of people on the same network. That can be a problem. But again, for me in this instance, it's not. It's just for visual purposes only, just to show and uh, educational purposes. So yeah, basically that is it. That's how to get the actual frequency set up and connected. Now, of course, we could go into different squelch types. So I just kind of set that to default. So I set that to CSQ. Uh, and then you can, of course, move along to signaling systems. Now, I don't need that set for signaling systems at the minute because I don't have one set up. And let's see here. Now we have TXVox. Uh, you can choose whether to set that up. Um, I won't, again, I won't explain in this video what that all is. That's again for the next videos. But I'm going to keep that turned on for now. And now this is a very important one that we do need to know, and that is the power level. Now, there is a low and there's a high. I don't remember exactly what it was um, for the, I think it was 5 or 10 watts that this goes on. I think it's 5 watts for the low and 10 watts on the high. I'll put a little check on this video up in the top left-hand corner to see whether which one it was. But I have it set to low because I'm not, tra I'm not like... Uh, putting out my frequencies too far um, and I have my license set to low so I don't want to go out too far uh, when it comes to uh, power level and uh, frequency and that is all it so again for analog very simple very easy uh, you can basically just pop in your channel uh, that you have your um, license for and then you pop it in here and then you're good to go Awesome, so now moving on to the next part, as we can see we have our analog channel type set up and we have it all connected into our system here. So to basically set this onto our Motorola radio, we have a few options we can go at this. So if you're trying to clone this, so if you're trying to set this for multiple devices, which currently I'm not, I have two, so I can easily just copy and paste that over, which is pretty easy. But what you could do is you can either press clone uh, as you can see, unable to clone 
there's check the device that is connected there's only one cable right now so I need to add a second one but you can add that one you would want to go is up here to the top and you can press right now again very important thing you can choose to save this code plug uh, by pressing save as and then saving this into the file location you would like to save this in um, and then of course it saves it as the basically I think it was the code of the radio it saves it as the file but you can change that to code plug one two three four for example uh, and then it saves it as a code plug CPS so you press save and then that saves it here onto the desktop code plug one two three so then that's the way you save it now the next thing is of course writing it so you just want to go up here and then press C where it says press write once it presses right, a little box comes up and then all you got to do is wait for this to go through. However long that takes, <laughs> usually it takes quite a while uh, for my device. And as you can hear in the background, uh, the radio just went into programming mode. And then you see, right, successful. Now it disconnects the device because it's restarted. And as you can see here, the radio is rebooting. And now as you can see, it's reconnected. And let me see here, as shown here on this video. Uh, and as you can see here on this video, all you need to do is just move along to the channel that you just added set, and that's channel four. And you can see we have that all set up and connected now. So you basically be able to copy and paste this from the first radio here on to basically you'd want to connect to your second radio read the radio here uh, make sure that it has the same cps version because if it doesn't there can be some errors and it will say you know cps version is not uh compatible uh it has a different code plug uh that's fully fine uh you can basically go back into zone back into the zone that you copied and you can copy the whole zone and then you can paste that directly into the second Motorola radio if there are errors with the code plug version being different now that shouldn't be an issue if you have the same radio with same code plug but that's how you do it as you can see guys easy as that very easy to go ahead and connect and uh, pop in some new channels into your Motorola series of radios uh, so all you got to do then is just take a little look here hopefully it will work I don't have the best camera See channel four, which is the one that we programmed in there with the channels set up connected onto the same radio of series. So of course, guys, if you'd like to see any more videos like this, go ahead and put a like down below and give me a follow and ask any sort of questions. If you have any questions, go ahead and list it down below in the comments and I'll go ahead and I'll be sure to respond to you as quickly as I possibly can. So thank you guys for the watching the video. Peace out and I have a good evening.